Well, how are we? Are we good? Awesome. Well, I have a secret to share with you. You are all here on purpose. You made a series of decisions that led you to this room today. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever thought about what your motivation is behind everything you do? Why you're here? Not how you got here, someone invited you, or what you hope to get out of today in hearing these talks, but really the purpose and the reason for you being here today. Well, this question has had such a huge impact on my life and has really become the foundation for my journey as a social entrepreneur. So today I want to look at two core motivators that really impact all of our decision making and our motivation. So I was asked to come and share today about starting an unusual business in an unconventional way. So today we're talking about not business as usual. I'm the CEO and founder of Kamek. Kamek is an outdoor lifestyle brand that engages people in the adventure of changing lives. So we started Kamek with the purpose of helping to end malaria-related deaths in Africa and also to invest in sustainable initiatives around the world. We launched Kamek about a year ago on a crowdfunding platform called Kickstarter. And we had the goal of raising $15,000 over a 50-day campaign through pre-order sales. And this is what happened. We ended up raising $200,000 over 50 days. We accomplished 1392% of our funding goals, and it just blew our expectations out of the water. And that led to this. We received tremendous media coverage, and people were just sharing our story. And that was incredibly exciting. And so through the Kickstarter campaign, we were able to launch our product. Uh, we were able to engage a community around the brand. We were able to develop a world-class supply chain that is both environmentally and ethically responsible. I'm a dreamer. I tend to see life uh, for what it could be rather than what it is. I, I live in the distant future. I'm also an entrepreneur. I love adventure, and entrepreneurs tend to be ready to run into the wild unknown. But there's a lot of fears associated with entrepreneurship, right? Or starting anything new. We all know that businesses fail all the time. Uh, finances can become tough as an entrepreneur. There's the fear of competition. And I've experienced all of those fears firsthand. When we first started Kamek, I had many people tell us that this idea of starting this business was overly optimistic and not scalable. At that time, I was a full-time grad student. We were living with family, and we had no money. And when we launched on Kickstarter, our competition was ruthless. And needless to say, they didn't give us a warm welcome into the outdoor industry. But nothing could have prepared us for this. What? <laughs> we're pregnant. This was definitely not in the forecast for 2012 fiscal year. But when my wife and I found out that we were pregnant, we felt, we felt two emotions simultaneously. We felt fear and love. Fear of the unknown and an overwhelming amount of love for our unborn son. And so in that moment, we had a decision to make. Are we going to move forward in love or are we going to move forward in fear? And so I believe that in everything we do, people make decisions based on one of two things, either love or fear. And so if we were to trace all of our decisions back to core motivators, I believe that we would see that we are either intrinsically motivated by love or by fear. Okay, and that thesis requires way more time than I have to give today. So what I want to do is discuss how this belief has impacted our journey of Kamek, and also how I believe that our most motivation can truly change the world. And so before I dive into our story a little further, we first need to define love and fear. So in our culture, there are many definitions for these two words. And in, in other cultures, there's many definitions. So for the purpose of talking about two core motivators, this is how I'd like to define fear and love. So fear is being self-centered with little to no regard for others. Love is being other-centered with little to no regard for self. So if you were to look at my life three years ago, it was drastically different. I had my dream job, or what was then my dream job. I was working for an amazing company. I made great money and experienced success and really got a taste of the high life early on. But with every new success, I realized that there was more and more fear that came with that success. As I excelled in my career, 
I realized that my pursuits led to more uh, inward desires, and I really struggled with materialism. And there was this inward battle that really made me realize that I needed to make a drastic change in my life. So I did what most, uh, many Americans do at a quarter life crisis. I went back to school. (laughs) So my background was in business. I received degrees in business and undergrads, and so I decided to do something completely different. I went to go and get a graduate degree in cross-cultural communications. And during that journey of going back to grad school, I became fixated on asking why. I became like a two-year-old asking why in everything. So I also was fixated on this concept of motivation. What drives my intent? What drives my actions? And how does my motivation impact my life and those around me? And so what I found was when I asked myself the question, what is my motivation for everything? What is my motivation for everything that I do? After an honest analysis, I found that I was generally motivated by fear. I was very self-centered and had little to no regard for others. And so I believe that actions inherently in and of themselves um, are, are basically neutral. Okay, so we, when we attach intent and motivation to those actions, they can have the power to have great impact for the greater good or devastating impact. And so when motivation is attached to actions and it fears the, the base motive, I believe that those actions can be compounded to have devastating impacts. And a great example of this is in America during segregation, right? So, so if we're looking at fear, the definition that we gave is that fear is being self-centered with little to no regard for others. So what should I be motivated by? What should we all be motivated by? Well, I believe that we should be motivated by love. Why? Why should we be motivated by love? Well, because love is the fullest way to live. Love accomplishes the greater good. Love brings cultures and communities together. And above all, love conquers fear. So you might be thinking, okay, Greg, you're talking about love. How in the world does this have practical implications in my life? and in my business. And well, so I would submit to you that this has huge implica- implications to your personal life and to your business. Simon Sinek is a well-known author, great TED communicator. He says that people don't buy what we do, but why we do it, okay? So he contends that the greatest businesses in the world, the greatest leaders are dialed in on why, the reason and purpose for existence. And that brings success. And so he says our why makes all the difference. And what I'm asking us to do is take a look at a step further. What motivates our why? And that I would submit that we should be motivated by love. And so let me give you some practical examples of how this has had an impact on Kamek in our journey and how our brand looks way different because we take motivation into consideration. So when I first started Kamek, I had no intention of starting a business. I was in grad school as a full-time grad student, and during that time, I was taking a class on global needs. And that class wrecked me. I was exposed to harrowing statistics and facts on anything from sex trafficking to clean water issues, global hunger, and the list goes on and on. But nothing really impacted me as heavily as this. Every minute, a child dies from malaria in Africa. Really? It's 2012. How is that possible? Every minute, a child dies from malaria in Africa. This is preventable, it's treatable, and we have the tools at our disposal to eradicate this disease. And so I was impacted by that. And I realized in that moment of being impacted that I had a decision to make. Would I respond in fear and isolate and decide, you know what, I'm going to just worry about myself in this? Or am I going to allow that having an impact on me to motivate me to love, to have action to help others, however that would look. And so during that time, my brother introduced me to hammock camping. And I love the outdoors, so I was incredibly interested in this concept. And so at that time, I was also thinking about how can I purposefully engage in the fight against malaria? And so I had this epiphany. What if 
we were to create a lightweight camping hammock that could get people off the ground who are sleeping on dirt floors and would have integrated insect netting that could also provide vector-borne disease prevention from diseases like malaria. And that was the catalyst that got Kamek started. So it wasn't a desire to start a business. It was really out of my motivation to help others. And so Kamek was born out of this desire to love others. And so our mission statement really reflects our outward consciousness. And so nowhere in our mission statement will you find the words maximizing shareholder wealth, creating high quality products, or the nuts and bolts of business. No, our mission statement is to equip and inspire for life-changing adventure. And so what that means is we are purposed to help others engage in the adventure of changing lives. And so our mission statement is outward focused and is intended to help others in turn be outward focused, to choose love as their motive. And so everything we do at Kamek is really run through this filter of our motivation. And so that has an impact on uh, everything from our logo to the word Kamek. And so my brother and I were talking about lightweight camping hammocks, having an impact overseas in developing countries. And in my excitement to say camping hammock, I accidentally said Kamek. And when I said that word, we both looked at each other with bug eyes, and we were like, that's it. That could be the name of the product, the name of the activity of hammock camping, so camicking, and also the brand, the vehicle that could help people engage in this adventure of changing lives. And so also our logo has so much significance and more than I have time to get into today, but we chose the female red kangaroo to be our logo, primarily because the female red kangaroo takes care of its young in one of the harshest climates in the world, the Australian outback. And it really symbolizes how we desire to care for others uh, and to come alongside of them in a harsh external environment. So this motivation also has impact on our color choices for our products, the materials that we select, uh, just overall product design. It has huge impact on how we communicate with our community and how we define and set parameters around our community. So one reason why we love using the kangaroos, our logo, is that a pack of kangaroos called a mob. How perfect is that for a community? So our community is literally called the mob. And someone in our community is called a mobster. And mob is also an acronym that stands for moving others beyond, all flowing from our why, why we're in this. And so we were able to see the impact of a mob so evidently, before we even got product into people's hands uh, when we launched our Kickstarter campaign. So why Kickstarter? We decided to go with an unconventional platform, an unusual way of funding uh, for many reasons. We could have gone you know, the typical bootstrap route of soliciting friends and family for startup funds, angels or VCs. But we decided that we wanted to engage as many people as possible on the ground level to really help us in our mission in changing lives. And so we decided to launch on Kickstarter. And in a 50-day campaign, we were able to connect with close to 2,000 people in over 50 di different countries all around the world. And those people are still very much engaged in our community today. And so let, let me tell you a secret about Kickstarter. We applied to be on the platform on three separate occasions, and each of those times we were rejected. And I don't have time to go into why, but we, we were just very motivated to be on that platform, and we didn't let no stop our decision to keep applying. Uh, in everything that we did, our motivation really drove our purpose. And so when it came to our giving, we didn't want to just be another company that was implementing a buy one, give one model for products to help people feel good about their purchases. No, our purpose was so much deeper than that. And our, so our, our philosophy for philanthropy could be summed up in three words, to give, develop, and sustain. And we were incredibly intentional with reaching out to nonprofit organizations to help us in our mission. And so we spent about a year researching and meeting with different malaria-fighting organizations. And uh, <clears throat> we decided to partner with Malaria No More. And through our partnership with Malaria No More, we're able to provide a treated mosquito net or health education materials to a family in Africa through the sale of every product. 
in, that, in turn, we're helping Malaria No More accomplish their goal of er eradicating malaria-related deaths in Africa by 2015. How cool is that? Think about that, 2015. So on top of that, we wanted to do more. So we decided to partner with 1% for the planet and commit 1% of total revenue to environmental and sustainable initiatives. And through our partnership with 1%, we connected with Comfort the Children International. Comfort the Children is an amazing nonprofit that does work in Kenya. And they do some incredible uh, environmental and sustainable initiatives there. But their work has had huge impact. Let me share a story real quick with you guys about Florence and Ruth. Florence is a single mom, and Ruth is a daughter with special needs. Ruth has cerebral palsy. And before connecting with CTC, Ruth would not have had an opportunity to walk or to receive physical therapy, and education was off the table. But Ruth, uh, through her mom being able to work at CTC to provide a wage for her family, uh, Ruth now walks today because of the physical therapy that she received, and also she's received an amazing education. And so when I dream about the world that I want to live in, and I dream about the world that I want my son to grow up in, I dream about a world where malaria does not exist. I dream about a world where people choose to be motivated by love. You know, I think we owe it to ourselves to ask the question, what is my motivation for everything? We're all in the same boat. We're all here to help each other. And I believe that if we are all motivated by love, there's nothing we can accomplish. Thank you.